Hello there, my name's Tony Range. Um, this is the house I live in, it's a round house. Built it 15 years ago and I live here with my partner Faith. Um, I've been asked occasionally to build round houses for people. Usually there's a kind of woodland shelter or something like that, but the principle's the same. So I'm gonna go through it with you, simply, so that you could, if you want to, build something fairly cheaply. This costs 3,000, most of the houses I build are are cheaper than that or about the same price and so we're talking not too much money. So here's a, to take an example is the build that we did as a group um, in the Forest of Dean in March 2013. Here's the site bounded by a small river to the north and a fence and the little stream on the left which is to the south. So we're surveying the site at the beginning. Here we need to produce a bunyip to get a level so that all the stones holding the posts are level. This is a piece of clay of plastic tubing with tea in it and uh, it's being calibrated at the moment in five centimetre gaps. The clear plastic was um, five metres long by the way. Here we're making a few tools. Uh, this is a mallet. This is uh, preparing the first arch, which are two uprights joined by a cross piece and also a cross piece about 10 centimetres up from the ground, checking it's square at every point. And also if you can find a level piece of ground, it's helpful. There's the, the uh, first circle, as you can see. Uh, this, there will be a, a stem wall around the outside of the circle of stones which are now level and the first arch is being prepared in the centre of the circle. Here we've got the first arch again. On the right hand side you can see that uh, there's a cross piece with uh, its two faces that will be facing upwards and that will be fixed by coach bolts to the uprights again being kept square. Here's Mike uh, flattening and pressuring the ground on, on the outside of the circle of stones to take a stem wall approximately 30 centimeters high all the way round on which we'll place the cobwood wall. Here's the stem wall coming taking shape there's a bit of urbanite, ordinary uh, stone that's been taken from a building site, plus stone taken from on site. In this particular case, we had almost all the wood and almost all the stone uh, available on site. So it's quite a cheap build in terms of materials. Here's the first arch up. It's braced with diagonals that are just temporary, of course. There'll be six of those put up, and then we'll have the cross pieces facing down with cross pieces. Uh, joining those arches to form the full henge. Here's one, the first facing down cross piece being assessed against two of the initial arches. It's quite a fancy job getting the angle right, as you can imagine, so it takes a bit of time. Here's a bit of detail there. You can see the arch on the right is braced using threaded bars and he's measuring the angle of the uh, cross piece on the left. This is using a cross piece as a lintel for the front door uh, which is quite a fancy piece of wood. You'll see it later in position so it's being held by one person. Two people are using a saw to get a fairly accurate cut there. Here's the henge standing with its fancy front lintel of order. All the uprights are order and the cross pieces are order from about 50 meters away so it's a pretty good cheap source of materials. The whole thing is about four and a half meters across. You notice that all the alder has been stripped of its bark. It looks quite good and consistent that way. Here's a detail of one of the joints. The right hand bit of the cross piece is the downward facing. 
and the left hand is the upward facing. Notice they're all st standing on the upright as well, so that's a fairly fancy joint. Here's putting the first rafter on. We use a Charlie stick, which is a kind of scissors arrangement of two poles, and then a three pole arrangement of a tripod with rungs lashed to it. And here Ruth is holding the first rafter in place and tying it onto the Charlie. Here is the fourth rafter going up. Each, each rafter is tied to the next one and they're also tied down onto the henge. More detail of this on livinginthefuture.org stroke 43 if you're interested in the detail of how to put up one of these reciprocal frames. Now leaping forward a few more hours in time uh, the Charlie has been removed, the tripod has been removed, all the rafters are sitting on each other as a reciprocal frame, they're tied together, they will be bolted in a minute and we can start putting sarking, i.e. wood spares, on the rafters. Here's the rafters all uh, lying on each other and being bolted together. There's a certain way of whoops. Gabriel's marking out a piece of sarking or a slab wood to the center of the rafter to hand down then to be cut to size and then hammered with two nails at each end onto the rafter. Work is going on a pace. It's much easier to do a a round house with a big group of people. There are about 15 working on this one. There are about 10 in this picture, aren't there? Some people selecting tools, other people cutting stuff out. And soon we'll be starting to make pug as well, which is what I call the uh, mix of mortar, cob mortar. So here on the left, uh, you can see Billy just starting to mix it up. So two and a half parts of sand, one of clay, plus a few bucketfuls of chopped straw, all mixed up not too much water added and then you put that between the rounds of wood so here you see the the roof being completed the tops of the rafters have been trimmed the roof is being uh, built up to the tops of the rafters to allow for the windstream to sit cleanly on them uh, the eaves have been fitted round the bottom there's a view from the inside of the roundhouse now starting to feel like a, an enclosed space with an acoustic a bit of rainproofness nice view there we'll, which we'll retain with a windscreen on top and here is uh, the first wall being visibly made with these big rounds of thuya with cob between them sometimes you can use uh, bottles instead of wood and the cob, uh, if you're building your own house, uh, I recommend that you have wool or straw right in the middle of the wall. So a layer of cob, then a, then straw or wool, then cob on the, out, on the inside again. Here's uh, the sort of aesthetic of producing a cob wall. There's certain kind of rules that we use for to keep the aesthetic in the balance. Here's the roof. We've got here carpet then plastic, then a drainage pipe spiralling round for surplus water, taking it down to the back, then more carpet, then turves that we've cut from about 20 metres away. Here's more of the wall being made. It's a fairly slow business. It takes a few days to get a good wall together. Uh, it's quicker if you've got big logs like these. They're all 40 centimetres long. Different thicknesses, as you can see, but all 40 centimetres long. Um, here we're using also the window from several washing machines that we've got from a recycling centre which make great little porthole windows. This is designed for children to play in so that it's got a kind of runway around the back, it's got little windows, it's also got a, a hole in one of the walls so that children can climb through that. Gradually it's taking shape here. Here's another bit of decoration that you can put in. These are blue bottles uh, put inside a jam jar and taped to be like a log. The jam jar clear bit goes on the outside of the wall 
and here's the view from the inside when the sun shines on it. You have to place them strategically so that the sun will hit it. This is facing the southwest. There's the hole I was telling you about um, for children to climb through. It's framed by giant logs, each of which took three people to put into place and then is a screwed through with a 12 inch Here's another view of one of the washing machine porthole windows. You can see that the cob is not absolutely flush with the ends of the logs. It's, it's set in about three centimeters, four centimeters, uh, to allow for pointing in the future or um, just for aesthetics. I think it looks better like that. And when you've got candlelight or something like that, or different or sunlight casting in that uh, light at an angle, you get a very pleasing aesthetic effect. Mud here is still absolutely fresh as you can see. It'll dry in about three or four days. Here's the view from the outside of that coloured glass bit. It's nice to arrange your wall with giant logs if you can around the bottom and then you can use smaller ones higher up. There's a few rules that we use for to keep the logs clean and well arranged. There's a view from the outside of the hole in the wall. Delicious sized bits of thuya wood this. Fantastic. And in the meantime we're still working on the roof. Some people are turfing. That takes quite a, quite a while, a couple of days. And also putting the windscreen on. Here Ruth and Mike are fitting the windscreen. Uh, it rests on the turf so the turf has to be built right up to the the top and then uh, the windscreen rests on it and is held down by straps uh, and then turf placed on those straps there it is from above you can't see the windscreen hardly but it's a good uh, source of light on the inside on the left is the doorway you can see and that's intended for another windscreen to be there so this is the end of day five basically day five of the second week that is and so that's uh, ten days in total that we have taken to build this from scratch this group of people plus two others who couldn't be there it's much more fun to do it in a group if you build several roundhouses you could uh, build one for each if you couldn't you and be really good by the time you finished around the back it's uh, it's a bit lower uh, it's nearer the stream so the, the water will collect in the drainage pipe and uh, be vented off down to the, the stream uh, and there's extra supports for the roof again of order on logs there looks pretty good doesn't it this is on the day it was opened with the the toddlers group coming to inspect it see the window there you can fit windows into these houses fairly simply have a good lintel above a good sill below Yeah, so it looks, uh, I like the sarking as well from underneath. There we are, that's, that's the lot. I'm sorry it's been very quick, but um, time being what it is, I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, bye for now.